Did you sell your left kidney to get your hands on an RTX 3090, only for Subcom 2 gameplay to look like this? No, 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 stop, I got you. There's a solution and it's pretty simple. Turns out Nvidia introduced a massive game-breaking bug in their December 2020 drivers, causing your FPS in a lot of old games, including Supreme Commander 2, to drop to PowerPoint presentation levels. We're talking 5 FPS whenever you move your mouse. A lot of people from our community and the Forged Alliance community reached out to Nvidia describing the issue, and what do you know? Nvidia actually fixed it a few months later. End of story, right? Nah, they broke it again sometime around July 2021. So what can I do about this, you may ask? After months of research, we found two quick solutions, a really easy one and a slightly more advanced one that doesn't require you to downgrade your drivers and doesn't affect performance in newer AAA games. Option 1. Downgrade your drivers. Nvidia solved it in the past, right? Just find the driver version where it works and download that one. Wouldn't it be really handy if someone used the biggest Supreme Commander 2 Discord in the world to collect data through a survey and figure out the latest version that still works? Wow, I sure hope somebody co- Okay, here's the table. Clearly version 472.12 still works, and this is how you can download it. Step 1. Google something like NVIDIA Drivers Advanced to find a webpage where you can search for specific versions and open the first link. Step 2. If the webpage doesn't automatically fill out information about your GPU, enter it yourself. There's plenty of other tutorials out there if you're unsure where to find this info. Step 3. Click search and find version 472.12 or lower, download this version and follow NVIDIA's installer steps. But what if you want to use the latest drivers? Turns out this performance issue is related to something called the NVIDIA Display Container, which can be found inside the Services tab in Task Manager. Stopping the service before launching the affected game like Subcom 2 or FAF will fix the issue, but it's probably a good idea to enable it again after you're done, because having it disabled might cause issues in more recent games that rely on it. Now wouldn't it be really handy if somebody figured out a way to do all of that automatically anytime you launch Supreme Commander 2? Well of course it's possible, through the magic of batch files, but you should be really careful around these because it's probably the easiest way to send someone a virus. Which is why I'm not going to send you a finished batch file saying I pinky promise it's not the virus, but we're going to have a little programming course and you're going to write it yourself. Option 2. Disabling NV container automatically with batch files. Step 1. Create a new text file on your desktop, open it and disable word wrap in the format option so you can see the line breaks. Step 2. Copy these lines of codes that disable NV display container before launching SC2 and enable it again after you quit the game. Step 3. Now we just need to write the logic to launch SC2, which requires you to locate where the SC2 executable is installed. You can launch other programs in batch files by putting their file path in quotes on a separate line. If you're doing this for another game that's also affected by this bug, then enter its exe file location instead. Step 4. If you don't know where to find where SC2 is installed, watch the first 60 seconds of my Mods and Maps tutorial video. Inside the SC2 folder, continue to the bin folder, find SupremeCommander2.exe, Right-click and go to Properties, and copy the entire location. Step 5. Inside the text file, paste the exe location in quotes here. Make sure there are quotes on both sides of the file path and it's precisely three lines of code that look exactly like mine except for the middle one if your SC2 is installed somewhere else. Sometimes copying the location like this will only link the parent folder, so you'll need to copy the application name and include it at the end after bin like so. Step 6. Now we just need to save it as a batch file. In the top left corner, click File, Save As, Desktop, and name it whatever you want, but make sure to put .bat at the end and then confirm. For some people, this is enough. You're done! Double clicking this file will disable NV Display Container and launch SC2 with no problems. But if you see access denied in the console that pops up, this means that the batch file doesn't have the right permissions to disable NV Display Container. You could right click and run as admin every single time, but in a few years that's hundreds of clicks that I won't get back. So there are a few more steps you can do to automate this process. Step 7. Giving your batch file admin privileges. For security reasons, Windows doesn't allow you to automatically launch this file with admin privileges every time, but there are many ways around it. The easiest one, and my favorite one, is creating a shortcut to the batch file and giving that admin privileges. This works. Don't you just love Windows? To avoid having two similar icons on your desktop, I recommend first moving your batch file to the bin folder with the SC2 executable. Placing the batch file in the same folder as the SC2 executable will actually simplify the code a lot. Right click on the batch file and click edit. Replace everything in the quotes with percent tilde dp0 which returns the file path of the batch file, and follow it up with supremecommander2.exe. 
You don't even need to capitalize the letters since the syntax is not case sensitive. This will make the code a lot more robust and allow you to move the entire SC2 folder somewhere else without breaking the batch file and forcing you to update the file path. Any shortcuts you make to this batch file will actually continue working, even after you move the entire SC2 installation folder. So you'll probably never have to look for this video ever again. This actually also allows you to take this batch file and send it to your friends. It will work on their PC too as long as they put it in the bin folder and create the shortcut. But as I mentioned in the start of the video, batch files can be super nasty, especially if you give them admin privileges. So I would always right click the file and edit to check what's really inside. Now that you have the batch file in the same folder as the SC2 executable, right click on the batch file, create shortcut and move this shortcut to your desktop. Right click on the shortcut, properties, shortcut, advanced, check run as administrator and confirm. And that's it, you're finished. Launching this file will open a console window telling you exactly what's going on, but be sure to avoid closing this console window before closing SC2, because this console window is actually waiting for SC2 to be closed before enabling NV display container again. If you ever close it before SC2 by accident, I would just restart your PC, which will automatically launch NV display container again, avoiding issues in more recent AAA games as I mentioned before. Unfortunately, Steam is also not a big fan of linking batch files to your Steam library. Originally, I was going to continue this tutorial by explaining how to replace SC2 in your library with this shortcut, but I've done a lot of research and the only way to do this is by converting your batch file to an exe file, which means giving this batch file you made to some random anonymous program you found on the internet and trusting what they give you back isn't a virus. This is why I'm not going to explain how to do this because it's an awful idea, and honestly, I don't see an issue with launching SC2 through this shortcut on your desktop. If you have Steam running, it will still detect the application and log the hours and any achievements you get. So yeah, that's everything. Thank you for watching the tutorial, and if you have any issues, be sure to post them in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Are you seriously playing Subcom by yourself? Come join the biggest Supreme Commander 2 Discord in the world with over 1,000 active members. Server's over 5 years old and we're still hosting games daily and playing all these stupid fights because we still like you and we're just Oh yeah, and the invite is like the first link in the description, you'll find it.